Dick Disturbance, the UWC. I'm Eric Roy in the commentary booth, and we've got ourselves a great card of action for you, professional wrestling. You see Travis Weir going after Shank Barzini to start things off. Travis Weir, Travis Barzini throws him over the top rope. Ow, man, he really hit hard on the outside. But broke his back on that apron. Dickie Wabash coming over and just about getting uh, tagged for his troubles. We have a tremendous card for you including the championship match between Harker and Blake Green. And you can see Travis Rear missing that, oh, missing it a second time. Barzini just one step ahead of him, tried a double elbow and landed nothing other than himself. And Barzini up in the corner, coming off with an elbow of his own, coming off the top rope. Shink Barzini is all sorts of crazy wrapped in a small package. This young man going to go after Travis Weir in the corner. And trying to, nope, gets dropped right off that top rope. Might have broken a nose there. Really just kind of ripped at that nose. And now Weir's going to do some of the job himself in the corner. And Barzini is down. Now holding his neck. Back stomp by Weir, using his weight against him in that corner. Weir certainly has changed his outlook from just a few weeks ago. Barzini tries to fire back, and Weir pounds him, rakes across the back in the corner. Weir turning on his tag team partner, the fabulous Jason V, a few weeks ago, and joining up with the Wabash Talent Agency. Now going at the eyes of Barzini, certainly a little more Fierce. Oh, down into the lower midsection and a second headbutt in the lower midsection by Barzini and a headbutt. That's not going to do anything to Weir. Setting him up for a suplex, maybe. Up and down. Well done. And a rolling cover. Just gets a one. Kind of a spinning kick out. You can see Barzini in a little bit of trouble. And again, going to that back and raking the back of Shank Barzini. Stomping across that bottom rope. Weir had been certainly used to the crowd cheering in his favor in the past, but recently getting back with his uh, former tag team partner, Blake Reed, enjoying the Wabash Talent Agency. Now look at this. That's a, oh, a spinning toe hole. Spinning toe hole. This is a submission hold. And he's got it locked in well, and you notice he's backed up. Now got a little too close and rolled up. No, no, no. The referee called one, but his shoulders weren't down. Now Garzini gets caught with a clothesline. The referee anticipated a pinfall that time, and I think Weir caught him off guard by not getting that shoulder down. Now Weir back up. And now half Nelson from behind. Elbows coming off, comes off the ropes, tries to get some momentum, and gets planted for his trouble in a cover by Weir. It's pretty arrogant. And too close to the ring rope, says Barzini. You hear Wabash across the way. You can probably see him on your screen yelling stratagems to his man, Travis Weir. Elbow, really, Weir is a, is a very solid wrestler, but the last couple weeks has been more of a beatdown style. Now you see Barzini gets out of the way. Now up over the top. No, not a sunset flip, but a straight over the clothesline. Down goes Weir. A drop kick to the knee. Good job taking the pin out of the big man. Back off the ropes. Flying headbutt. Down goes Weir. Travis Rear is down, and you see his manager, or handler, Dickie Wabash. Now, Shank Barzini going out. What's he got? Oh, he's got his, got his bottle of hot sauce or syrup or something. That's all Shank Barzini needs is something to amp him up. He gets ready. 
but in that meantime, he's let Weir get back up. Whoa, he gets the big man up and an outstanding fireman's carry. Weir works his way out of it. That was impressive. Weir, power slam. One, two, and three. And that's it, folks. Well, that was pretty impressive. Shank Barzini got the big man up. But the big man won out. Weir dropped off of him into the power slam. And just like that, one, two, three, and you see that certificate. But your winner in the first match of domestic disturbance is Travis Weir. We've got a lot more coming up. Homicidal Cheatin' Davis. We are sick and tired of seeing you come out here and cheating the most dominant tag team in UWC history. That's right, and tonight here at Domestic Disturbance, we're gonna cause a little assault and battery. So get any partner you want. We'll be waiting, and we're gonna cut right through you. Oh, and he runs right into the chop. 
Gets a boot for his trouble, now into the ropes. Reversal, Sawyer into the ropes, comes off, whoop, stops short, makes the tag. Well, you know, came up short, he's gonna run into, oh, hip toss and down, and he's gonna run into a headbutt. Arm ringer, and a tag to the big man, Frank Wyatt, 20 in. Pretty fluent tag team moves here, maybe these two could look for a run of the tag titles. Well, you know, I think the winner of this would certainly be a, a number one contender for the tag titles, which will come up later in this show. Exactly, of course, speaking of titles, we know all about the the problems that Frank Wyatt's had over the last few months with the Warden. The Warden's the man who took the online title away from Frank Wyatt. Now cover one, two, no. And Wyatt says, get him away from me, ref. And Wyatt bullets him into the corner. Tag into Davis. Well, Davis knows just about every way you could possibly hurt a fella. Right into short ribs and a headbutt. Steele collapses in a heap. It's not very often. Steele is a very big fellow, but he may be the smallest fellow in this war man tag. Oh, right down to the throat there. One, two, and no, kicks out. He keeps seeing a lot of moves to the head and a lot of moves to the neck area, and you gotta remember the injury. Not too long ago, a few years ago, actually, it was an injury to the neck that almost put Stephen Davis out of action indefinitely. Yep. Now, knee lift. Again to that short rib area they hit before. And punch right to the noggin and down goes Dave. And down goes Steele. Headbutt. And that is one big cranium coming down. And the cover. Two. But you look how he covered. He moved the most of his weight up on the chest. It was a little harder to kick out. That's more of a roll out. Yes. Good job that time. A lot of times you see wrestlers not use their advantages in that situation. Exactly. Davis. Oh. Big chop right to the clavicle. If you noticed as they were making their introductions, the fans here at the Battle Zone were actually chanting towards Rough Cut, where's your titles? Oh, and I know that really drives Bill Sawyer crazy. Into the corner, Davis. Charges. Oh. Oh. Straight into that steal, and down goes Davis and a tag into Sawyer. Sawyer's gonna go out and take advantage of this. A few stops to his former mentor. And this is exactly this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. That injury that happened a few years ago that nearly put Davis out of action for good. But he just went almost neck first into that steel turnbuckle. At the very least, he hit on the collarbone, and that's never in place. One of the weakest bones in the body. It can snap like a twig very easily. And of course, something else that can snap you like a twig Ooh. is Bo Sawyer. He stomps in that same area. This is that tag team expertise that has gotten them the title two times, I believe. Yes, two times. And maybe again, because they stayed together through uh, firing a manager. Stomp on the shoulder, very nice. And now working the front chance comes Bo Sawyer, keeping the fresh man in, into the ropes, goes Davis, Davis doesn't quite get the tag, we saw Frank Wyatt reaching over for the double elbow and a cover, oh, let's get two. It's not going to be easy keeping Davis down, he knows every trick to get out of it. Exactly, but if there's somebody that could give him a fight, it's a former trainee like Bo Sawyer, Bo trained under this man, he taught him everything he knows. Uh, Bo Sawyer knows a lot of moves, and you add on the uh, the rage and the power that he has, and certainly anyone can feel that rap. And whoop, that flip gets him over one. Could have two. it. Oh, nope. They made it look too close to the ropes, too. That time, oh, he was able to power out, kick oh. in the back of the head, did and you, a quick tap. Did you see exactly? It was a kick to the back of the head, but it was almost located right in the back of the neck as well. He knows what to zero in on. Yeah, and again, good job cutting off the ring. Get to his corner. Steel. Remember when this tag team first formed, there was a little uh, reluctance on the part of Bo Sawyer to even form a tag team, but now it seems that certainly it was the right choice. Oh, exactly. They've done nothing but succeed, although currently without titles. And Davis almost gets into the corner. Steele cuts him off with the knee lift in it. Two. Didn't quite get enough leverage on those shoulders that time. And up comes Davis. 
Bolt. Sends him over to the wrong side of the ring. And good job that time by Steele. This is the point where a rough cut starts to show their fluidity as a tag team. They start to showcase why they're former two-time tag team champions. Double suplex possible and oh, oh. too high that time. And a tag. There we Double go. Man, Frank Wyatt. Oh, try <laughs> Red Rover. Oh, double beard. He hurt him. That hurt. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. What? And a double <laughs> Could be it. Goes up steel. Goes after Sawyer. Up for the oh. Davis is still outside the ring. And up, up. Fireman's carry. Wait a second. Nope. Pulls him down. Turned his back on Sawyer. Whoa. Sawyer thrown out of the ring after berating his partner. 3D wrestling for those fans in the front row. Yep, now a kick. Back to the midsection. Steel comes off. Gets caught. Oh. And planted. The big man goes for the cover. One, two, a two. And Sawyer just gets into the ring in time. That was close. Oh, that was very smart on both Sawyer's part, though. He was so quick to get in there and break up that pin attempt. Meantime, Davis still hasn't been able to get to his corner. He took a lot of beating in that earlier action. Now it's two on one. The referee has lost complete control. Don't know who the real legal man is for Rock Cut. He's finally going to get one of them out. Wait a second. No, he's not. He's telling him to go, go up top? What? What is going on here? Two of them on the second rope. Oh, man! Double shoulder block off the second rope. Man is down. Cover. One, two. Look at it up. Davis finally got in. Breaks it up. How close was that to being over? Well, he wasn't going to kick out, I don't think. No. Oh. Ouch. Davis with a chop to Sawyer. In the meantime, Wyatt and Steele working on this side. Reverse into the corner now. Got all sorts of mayhem going. The referee saying, "Let him play." Uh oh. Well, look out! Boom. Hits his own man. And through the second rope and out goes Sawyer. And second time he did that. Splash. The power of Wyatt, the experience of Davis, a combination that this time Rough Cut could not beat. A couple of uncharacteristic errors by Rough Cut, and that certainly cost him in this match. Rough Cut's the one that made the challenge for this match, and now they have to eat their own words. Yeah, and well, maybe we'll see more of this team. I don't know, but it certainly was effective. Took out one of the best teams around in Rough Cut. You can see Bo Sawyer is beside himself. We've got a lot more action coming up on domestic disturbance, including tag team championship action, coming up in just a bit. I'm South Steve Davis. I'm fired up. You know what, Frank Watt? I'm fired up, too. You know what? We had one heck of a match out there. We clicked you know real well. We did. You know who thinks we're a great tag team? Rough cut. That's right. Josh Steele, <laughs> Bo Sawyer, I told you I had backup. Right here, the man Frank Wyatt. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we can just go after the UWC tag team titles. You know what? You're on to something. I like the way this man <laughs> thinks. I like the way you're thinking. Or maybe we go on and we do bigger and better things on our own. That's true. UWC you know online, keep watching. Tonight's the night, UWC, the Aaron Matthews, he takes home the online title. And Warden, I'm sorry, buddy. I gotta go through you to do it. It's coming home to me.
Enigmatic Warden going up against Aaron Matthews. Aaron Matthews, the only man to have pinned the Warden in his third incarnation. And straight after him goes the Warden, and straight after him goes Matthews afterwards. Right, right. Ooh. Warden throws Matthews into the corner, and he starts landing. Elbow right on the top of the head, swings and misses, and Matthews coming back with some more rights of his own. Matthews setting him up for a whip. Cross lands in the corner. Matthews makes the charge. Oh, runs straight into a right hook. And the second one sends Matthews reeling. The third one rolls him back into the corner. Again, maybe a whip. No, going to be a straight choke and a punch. The warden now whips him into the corner. Matthews lands. Warden with the charge. Comes in. Lands the full body. And Matthews a little wobbly now coming out for that one. Back into the corner again by the Warden. Throws him into the far corner, does the Warden. Calls for the charge, misses. Warden hits that top turnbuckle. Left kick sends the Warden out. There's that drop kick we talked about. One of the best in the Midwest. That's what Aaron Matthews brings to the table. John Stone. Aaron Matthews holds the only pinfall win over he does. this fellow in this incarnation. That he does, and what if he's able to do that here tonight? The title could change hands. You think about Aaron Matthews, you take a look at the year 2015 has been for Aaron Matthews so far. We're still in the very early stages of the year. Oh, a little punch, oh my gosh. But he's already at our last big event. He had a shot at the tag team titles. Right. Now here tonight, he's got a shot at the online title. That's right. It hasn't been the best overall year for uh, Aaron Matthews, but you know everybody knows he's got the ability. He's shown it many, many times before. He's won many titles in this state and outside the state. Oh, just back and forth action now on the ring apron. Whoa! Oh! Ouch! A guillotine style neck breaker right on the apron and both athletes are down and the referee coming out to check. Wait a second, look on the corner of the ring, you see the minion just yeah. lurking around the post. He could strike at any minute. Yeah, that minion is something else, isn't it? Wait a minute. Nope. One, two, nope. Not enough. Not easy to do that with the near leg. You won't try to get that far leg for the cover. I'm sorry, but that minion is just creepy. I mean, the man is barefoot. If he is a man. The minion is creepy? Yeah. What did he come in with? Well, you got a point there. Into the ropes goes the warden. And Aaron Matthews hasn't been able to do a lot of high flying yet. He's been pretty much going straight out. He hurts his hand on the head of Matthews, does the warden. Just like I said in the last match, the warden became the online champion when he defeated the original champ, the first ever online champion, Frank Wyatt, albeit with devious tactics. And now goes Matthews. Wow. Warden. Certainly, it is, it's hard to determine the actual... Well, the actual goal of the Warden at this point, other than just punishing whoever he's in the ring with, and anybody else who happens across the sun. Knee to the back of the head. He certainly wants to punish Aaron Matthews for uh, reducing that aura of invincibility he had before this last week. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Into a suplex and well done indeed. Right on the back of the head. Like I started to say, I don't know if it's that. It might be 50 50 because it is for the fact that he got a pinfall victory over him weeks ago. But I believe, wait a minute. No, not much of a cover that time. I also believe that this is just another facet of the Warden's crusade against what he deems comic book characters in wrestling. 
comic book or cartoony style. And he sees somebody like Aaron Matthews. Aaron Matthews likes to have fun. He likes to call himself who's sexy. The crowd loves this guy. It's everything the Warden hates. Well, right now the Warden is in control. A couple of elbows to the gut, just followed by an elbow to the back of the head. And Matthews is taken down. He's really working on the upper body region so far. Now, uh, a beast suplex. An odd, uh, say, say something is odd about the Warden is uh, yeah. redundant. We think it's odd, but he thinks it's normal. A released suplex, really showing a little power there that maybe he hasn't shown before. Hey, but now maybe that mask might be helping that out a little bit. The referee should check that out a little bit. Uh, down the corner. Are we sure that's a mask? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's a mask. And choke him in that corner. The minion at ringside hasn't gotten involved in yet, but he has gotten involved in the matches in the past, as John Stone mentioned up. Body slam, fall away. What's he going to do with this one? Straight up power slam. And uh, arrogant cover. Another nonchalant. One thing that this mask does provide is a little bit of cover for the racial reactions of the world. Though you can tell he was definitely a little distressed at the kick out that time. Look at him just tearing at the face on Aaron Matthews. Really? Misses. Oh! Spun right into the knee lift. Now that is some quick maneuvering by the warden. Brings him back up. Fireman's carry. Standing fireman's carry. And whoop. Double elbows to the chin. Reversing it. Oh! Into a version of a bulldog brings him down. A wraparound bulldog, I'd call it. Ah, I think that's right. Now, right to the head, clips him. Second one lands square. Oh! Brings him down, face first, or mask first, I should say. Wait a second. Now lines him up. Oh! Kick to the side of the head. Matthew's got a little close to the minion that time for my liking. Oh, exactly. The minion, look at him. He's just coiled. He's ready to go. Well, he's coiled. And I don't know about the strike card. Wait a second. Now Matthews for the first time going up top. And prone on the mat is the warden. Points up. There he goes. Oh! Square. Wait a second, look. And the minion comes up. That's exactly what we said was going to happen. The minion gets involved. Yep. Now Matthews breaks it up, grabs the minion. Throws the oh. ring. Now the minion walks right into the clothesline. Minion needs to get out of there. He's going to get himself hurt. We know for a fact because we've seen it before. The warden oh, exactly. could not care less about the, what happens to the minion. Exactly. They left look. him lame a couple of weeks ago. Now the warden is up. Oh, no. from behind into the ropes. Roll up. One, two, three. Oh. Got it. Well, there you go. Concentrating too much on the minion and not on the champion. And it costs him again. The warden is still your online champion. Aaron Matthews, who had things going his way, comes up on the south end of the decision. So look on Aaron Matthews' face right now. I can't believe what just happened. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to have a talk with this young man. It's, just, it's, been a, it's been a really rough year for him, obviously. And it's, it's kind of taken his toll, I think. Unfortunately, we have to ask the question, has, has Aaron Matthews already peaked at this young age?
champions, Tornado Jones and Joey O'Reilly. And looks like they're going to get something. This now there's Tornado Jones. Tornado Jones, I uh, don't see any Joey O'Reilly. Tornado Jones has the microphone. Well, we, we still haven't seen the herd and clock. Jumping. Well, no O'Reilly, I guess. Congratulations to the champ. There's a title. Father. Well, that still doesn't leave uh, Mr. Jones in good stead here. Styles in the ring. This is going to be a, a an odd matchup. I know for a fact that I that these fellows have not teamed together in any way. John Stone joining me again on commentary for this match, and uh, well, we almost had a title matchup, but uh, one of the champions is in the ring, and Tornado Jones going against Spencer Wells. These are two. Very oddly matched tag teams. Oh, exactly. I mean, you put them together, they make the number 10. Yeah, make the number... I'm talking about Vandy and Wallace. Yes, yeah, well, I'm talking about both sides. Uh, the, the combination of Jason V and Tornado Jones. Jones, a small, uh, smaller aerial 
wrestler, and uh, Jason B certainly the more experienced in ring, more of a ground game. Really, really quickly, not to cut you off or anything, but I want to go ahead and send all of our well wishes out to Joey O'Reilly. As Tornado Jones just said, Joey became a father once again a couple of days ago to a little baby boy. Yeah, that's a, that's a title you defend every day. Exactly. And uh, congratulations to Joey O'Reilly. And a couple of shots now to Wallace. Wallace, pushing man out, misses. Comes back, kicks. Uh -oh. better that time. Wallace trying to figure out where he is. Oh! Knocks him down. Wallace showing a little bit more backbone as of late. He's telling him, come on, hit me. Come on, hit me, he says. Well, you know, Tornado Jones is just waiting. No. He's waiting on it, but he makes a tag. And Jones is, a, is, a, is about as clean a wrestler as you can get. He doesn't like mixing it up if it's all possible. And he, now I know that these two have tangled before. Oh! Jason B, that was former just, UWC champion. That was just mean. Oh! And a, and a poke to the eyes. Catches him by the head. Headlock. Point to the camera. And they're getting a real good look up close. Jason V proved all throughout last season with the troubles that he had and in some of the matches he's had here in season three that yes, he loves to have fun, he loves to dance and he enjoys the crowd, but he can get nasty with the best of them. Oh, he definitely can. Oh, look at that. What a chop. What, what, what was that? that oh, that's a little better. Oh, an elbow. Young man, that's what Spencer Wallace does. That's the smartest thing he's done yet. Vandy rolls him up off the ropes. One, two, no. Vandy rolls right in. This is momentum against him. Jason, what a matchup this is between these two. And a quick tag into Tornado Jones. I really wanted to see this one go a little ways. Mark Vandy. You're going to get a chance to see those two in a singles match down the line. Oh, exactly. Don't forget, Mark Vandy just last month had an opportunity to become UWC champion. He did not succeed in that affair. Well, he came about as close as anybody can without getting it. Way up. Whoa! What was that? Double knees right to the neck. Now takes out the knee that time of Mark Vandy. He's down, staggered. Ooh. Tornado Jones loves flying through the air like a whirlwind. Now he's made the big man angry. He's catching the whirlwind now. The tornado is oh. in the corner. Yeah, yep. Picks him up. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at this. What are we going to see here? Oh, straight into the corner. And rolls him up. The referee's not paying any attention. One, two. Nope. The referee's trying to fix the top turnbuckle on the other side of the ring. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate for Tornado Jones because he had him rolled up pretty tight. Now Vandy and B in there. Into the corner. And this is a, the deviousness of Mark Vandy. He makes the tag to bring in Wallace. Wallace is going to charge in now. And you'll just notice Vandy holding him in the corner. So oh, exactly. He can't get away. That's a smart move. Dupree's words were that he wants to try and take Spencer Wallace to the next level, much like he did with Rough Cut not too long ago before they dropped him. Yeah, he, he might have a ways to go with, with uh, young Spencer Wallace, but uh, you know, there's, there's not a... He definitely has a lot of want to. I'll give him that. Tag in to Vandy. Vandy showing him what to do. Whips him in. Ooh! Well done. Now, whips him into the elbow. Good job. Good tag team work. Cover. And nope, that's not going to make it. As much as I hate to admit it, because we all know nobody likes lawyers. Dupree's not very well liked backstage. But this is a pretty good idea to have someone like Mark Vandy be in the corner of Spencer Wallace to lead him, to teach him. A, a tag team partner and a mentor, so to speak. And yes, this is a good idea. And that's about the only time I'll say something good about Mr. Dupree. Exactly. Oh, 
ordered or otherwise. And again, a bite now. You see Mark Vandy. Oh! Mark Vandy is one of the more dangerous wrestlers on this roster. He is a very good technician. He is also sadistic at the same time. Tornado Jones on the other side of the ring. He's just dying to get a tag, but I don't know if he wants to get in there with these fierce guys. He certainly is out muscle, but he's not. He's got the big advantage in speed here. Just a two. Spencer Wallace had better not kill Jason B any time. Headbutt brings him straight down. Again. Now works over and spits toward Jones. Oh, that's and just disrespectful. It's disrespectful, but it allows him to make the switch and do some double teaming. And a uh, bit of a veteran move by the young man. Gives him time. And Jones is just distracting the referee long enough for Jason Me to take a beating. Now calling for the referee. With about a six count. He knew what was going on, I'm sure. He didn't hear any count, so he didn't have to kick. Oh, he ended, he says. Oh. What's he gonna do here? Spencer Wallace can get a victory here over Jason V. This would be a huge, now huge plus to his career. And now Vandy's telling him not playing with him. Nope, too late. Oh. Spinning heel kick. And the tag into Tornado Jones. And then up to the top. Double axe handle, sends him in. Drop it. Oh, oh next. Get on to Vandy. Vandy goes down. There he goes. Drop oh. kick into the corner. He has a double effect as he's up against that corner. And another drop kick. Wait a second. Watch out. Ooh. Ooh. And he just gets run over. Like a baby deer in a Mack truck he was taken out that time. Stop. Just stomping oh, away. Look at this. And it, this, again, sadistic nature of Mark Vandy. It's sadistic and ridiculous. Oh. A double forearm. Now he starts wailing on Vandy. Vandy's going to go after him. And Vandy using his partner as a weapon to throw into V, and he's going to go back after Tornado Jones. Got him in the corner now. Now he's going to use him as a weapon again. Nope. Oh, backfire! High knee lift. Vandy rips him off. Hits the back of the head. Oh, look, no, top turnbuckle. He hit the top turnbuckle, but yes. it's just hanging there. Yeah, that's got to hurt. Oh, Ooh. head to head. Again, using his partner as a weapon. Spinning heel kick to the gut. Jason B is down, and he may be out. Whoa! There's that knee. And again, we say good night. Two, three. Well, there you go. Well, I don't know about inevitable, but man, when you hit that knee, it is lights out. There's nothing much left to Tornado Jones. He's just being pushed out of the ring. Oh, Jason. come on! Well, that's Mark Vandy for you. Taking out the refugees. Mark Vandy. And Spencer Wallace get the win. Jason B is still hurt his back and his head. Tornado Jones out on the floor. Carnage outside the ring. And, uh, well, I would have to say that, uh, Mr. Vandy, with a handshake, and exactly. used his partner the best way he could. Exactly. But here's the question. What's going to happen when Joey gets back? Well, a tag team champion, the former UWC champion, just got beat by these two. Anything could happen. Congratulations, Joey. We got a lot for you here at UWC when you come back. Tonight, I destroy Stan Knight. I prove that what he did to me last week was a fluke. He calls himself the right hand of God. Well, what's going to happen when the right hand of God meets the left foot of the devil? Cecil talks about how me beating him last week was nothing but a fluke. Let me explain something to you. I've never lived my life off thinking about luck. Last week, I did exactly what I promised the world I was going to do. I beat him, and tonight, it's going to be nothing different. I'm going to win because I know I can. I know I can prove it to everybody else. I know I've proved it to myself already. I'm going to prove to UWC Online that I'm nothing but a winner.
Dominican Devil himself. Cecil Cerveza as we get ready for yet another fine match at Domestic Disturbance. Eric Loy here in the catbird seat as we get ready for some more fine action. Sam Knight in his first ring EWC with a pinfall win over Cecil Cerveza. Cerveza figuring he's be dominant over Sam Knight, but Knight got the win. So now we have this match and whoa, a little pie face. And he pushes Cerveza away, does Knight. And a slap across the face, a second slap across the face, and a third. And really getting in the face of Sam Knight is Cecil Cerveza. Cerveza misses right, right, right by Knight. Swing and a miss. And a close line. And Knight now has a he'll go down, goes Cerveza. Up and and it's all going Knight's way. Looking for some help from the crowd. Cerveza in the quarter. Knight makes the charge. Misses. Runs in that top turnbuckle. Cerveza comes up. Takes him down. And a quick cover by Cerveza. Oh, no, nope. just a one. Tries to hold him down now. And just starts... Just start pounding on Sam Knight. Really, he has taken the loss too hard. And to his ego. And Cerveza adding that little extra bit of mean to the mean he's picked up over the last couple of years. Now firing to the back of Sam Knight. Knight gets the chop to the chest. And you see now Cerveza being very... Very determinate with his moves. Trying to humiliate Sam Knight after Knight got the win. Still got the championship match coming up. Parker Dudes, the champion, going up against Blake Reed of the Wabash Talent Agency. Oh, look at this. Knight turns around. Oh! Took a layer of skin off Knight, and now he tries to take some of it off his eyes. Running in the clothesline goes Knight. Cerveza now choking him on that bottom rope. Cerveza sets Knight down and stomp on the top of the head. Oh, that shot was vicious. They take one of the tattoos right off the young man, but now working the chin and basically the nose. Referee's got to get in there. He can't be doing that. Drops an elbow to the top of the head of Sam Knight. Bring Sam up. Talk with this young man, Knight. Elbow to the top of the head. He just a while back was looking for that match to push him over the top. Get that first win in the UWC. He finally gets the pinfall, and now Cecil Cerveza is going to try to punish him for it. Right to the side of the head. Another right to the side of the head. And again, I'm not sure whether Cerveza is going for the win so much as to punish Knight. And an elbow to the side of the head. And off the ropes. Hits him with the elbow. Hangs on. And throws him in again. Follows up with another elbow. Uses that elbow as an extra leverage. And an elbow of his own. And Knight. Knight is going to come off the ropes now. Misses the clothesline. Super kick. And down goes Knight like a tree in the forest. Cerveza taking a little too time, too much time to celebrate. And drags him into the middle of the ring and goes to the pin. Good at that time. Oh, but no, it's not going to be a three. You see the ring experience and the generalship that Cerveza has learned. Gets his man away from the ropes. Now he rolls over to the side to try to set something up. He's got him in his sights, charges in, lands that flying forearm, brings him out, throws him in the middle of the ring. Stands a while for closing. Downs the ring a couple of times to try and psych himself up. And misses the kick. And a whoa, roll up quickly. One, two, no. Just the two. And he landed that kick that time. 
And he's out. That could be three. One, two. No, he kicked out. Wow. Well, maybe that win has got something going in Mr. Knight. Cerveza thought he had it finished. You see a little more frustration now. Look at that look in his eyes. The Dominican Diablo now working in. And slapping. What's your problem? He says, throws him into the ropes. Comes off, catching the sleeper hole. Catches him. He's got him in really good. He's got a good angle on it. Coming across that carotid artery. Really cinched into his elbow. Now bringing him down is going to be very tough for Sam Knight to get out of it. Might be losing a little bit of leverage. Now he sinks it back in again. Bringing him down toward the mat and down on the mat. Referee's going to make the count here. Brings the arm down once. Down twice. And no, not quite. No. He's not ready to go yet. He's got to turn into the hole. And it gives make his way up, and he does. He turns into it. Breaks out with an elbow. Third elbow. Cerveza goes into the ropes. Goes to the big clothesline. Down goes Cerveza. Second one. A clubbing clothesline. Takes a little time to set up. Off the ropes. Tries it again. Nope. Cerveza holds on. He says, come on, get it. Nope. Off the ropes that time. Nice suplex coming off the ropes, using that for extra momentum. Now he runs into... Oh! Plants him. But that may have taken a lot out of Sam Knight as well. Both wrestlers down. They're up to three. Could be a double knockout. Four. The referee Underwood counting is up to five. You see some stirring from Sam Knight. He's going to make the ropes. He's going to make his way up. And he's up. Both wrestlers up at eight. Nope. Blocked. Right hand. Clipped him on the jaw. Blocked again. Another right hand. Clips him. And a third one hits him square. And it's all night right now. Into the ropes. Coming off. Catches him. Nope. He's going to elbow his way out of it. Comes off. Nope. Super kick blocked. Switch. Kick to the gut. Kick to the side of the head. Picks him up. Him. But he can't cover. He can't cover. Or he's not covering yet. He's trying to get some momentum from the crowd. That may be a mistake. But a veteran such as Cerveza, you don't give him extra time. Comes in, grabs Cerveza in the corner. Pulls up that right hand. Oh, oh. A deliberate low blow by Cerveza, and, and the referee caught that one. That's going to be a straight up, straight up DQ. That's a straight up DQ, and the win for now. Cerveza's got a chair. Oh, right to the back. Cerveza has lost this match, and he has lost it. He has absolutely lost it. He's hit him with a chair. He's got the chair back up. This is a steel chair, folks. And uh, back again, Sam Knight. Knight has the win, but he's really getting it full blast from Cerveza. Oh, right to the gut. The referee not able to do anything about this. A second one to the gut. That bell's being rung. Well, somebody's got to be doing something here to help out Sam Knight. A third shot now really could do some internal damage with that chair. And uh, trying to stand victorious to Cecil Cerveza. But he was beat, and he knows it. And your winner is going to be Sam Knight. He may not look it in the ring, but it's Sam Knight that's going to come away with the win. And Cecil Cerveza walks away the DQ loser. Sam Knight gets the win. Coming up next on Domestic Disturbance, we've got a championship match. The heavyweight title is at stake. Parker Dirge against Blake Reed. 
people can say what they want about me. They can say that I may not dress the best or that I don't comb my hair or that, you know, you don't judge a book by a cover is my point. And everything that I have said that I'm going to accomplish in this company, I have accomplished. And tonight is no different. Blake Reed is going to walk out of domestic disturbance, your new UWC heavyweight champion. Yeah, what about what Blake Reed did to me? Domestic disturbance coming up. Well, I was a little bit disturbed when he took this belt, jumped me from behind, and smacked me right in the head. That was an attention getter. And as I sat, nobody was asking me what I thought then, were they? No, they were talking about what a great and awesome thing Blake Reed did by taking down the champion. Well, last time I checked, that was called a cowardly act. Well, since everybody thought Blake Reed did something nice, I came back and returned in kind. I laid him down flat, and that's the last thing we saw between Harker Dirge and Blake Reed. That was Dickie Wabash and Travis Weir scraping his carcass up off the mat. Come domestic disturbance tonight. I'm looking for a replay of that same event. See if I don't do it.
He was the man. He was the man. He was the man. Oh! And now he gets a drop kick to the back. Blake Wait. Reed was the man. Blake Reed ruled the roost around here for a long, long time. Now Harker Dirge is ruling the roost. Now chasing him around the ring with right hands. Defending that UWC championship that he's held more than once. And held for a long time now. Defending it against all the top athletes in the UWC. Oh! And a response to the right after, oh, might have bloodied the nose of Blake Reed. Now comes back to the right. Mark Dirge comes back with one of his own. If you want to think about it, think about the last time Parker Dirge lost the UWC Championship. It was last year to Cecil Cerveza, who at the time was a member of the Wabash Town Agency. And Blake Reed figured in heavily in that decision. Yes, he certainly did. Now Blake Reed's getting his shot to get back what was uh, his a long time ago. And Parker Dirge just having fun right now, pounding away on the head of Blake Reed. But look outside the ring and you'll see the extra weapons at his disposal. Honestly, I still don't want to believe that I see Travis standing down there. I don't. And a forearm. Down goes the big man. And trying to wake his way to the corner. Dirge brings him back to the middle arm ringer. And a kick to the gut and a head. We got a little driven right into that corner. That time Parker Dirge played to the crowd a little bit, a little out of character for Parker Dirge. Nick Austin, Blake Reed taking advantage of that situation. You remember this particular situation, Parker Dirge has been warring against the Wabash Talent Agency for a number of years, but this particular matchup occurred several weeks ago. Harker was looking to defend his title against the Warden in a title for title match, but Blake Reed dropped Harker. He left him laying. He put him out of action for a week. Yeah, that doesn't, that just doesn't happen. I mean, uh, yeah, I've done many, many matches, probably in the triple digits of Harker Dirge. And I don't think I've seen that happen more than twice. Oh! And uh, right into the foot of Harker Dirt. Dirt sets up, catches him, spins him around. Ooh, suplex. Uh-oh! Yeah. Uh -oh. Big man up and over. That's over 350 pounds up and over. And now a cover. One, two, no. No, it doesn't even get two. Oh, one and a half. And Reed not having any of that. Straight to the eyes is Harker Dirge. Oh! Harker Dirge's got to keep his head on a swivel. Like we said, Travis Wood and Dickie Wabash both at ringside. Yeah, both of them not averse to sticking their nose at all. Maybe not getting a nose, but a top of the forehead anyway of Blake Reed. We already saw Travis Weir once tonight victorious over Shank Barzini. Yeah, that was a heck of a match. And, oh, oh the clapper. Kick right to the midsection, and a big knee lift. And whoa, the big guy's wobbling around. Into the ropes, coming off that to sleep uh -oh. Sleep boy doesn't have a really good angle on it. Now he's pressing it across that carotid artery, taking the big man down. Now he's got a great angle on it, as long as he stays on top of it. Cutting off the blood flow to the brain. And you see the rest of the Wabash Talent Agency hanging on every maneuver out. Reed doing the right thing by getting up. Barker Dirk's trying to get some leverage by going up, but that's gonna result in being smashed into the corner. I gotta admit, as much as I hate to say it, ever since joining the Wabash Talent Agency last year, Blake Reed, it's almost like he's been a new man. Well, he certainly has added that extra layer of me. And in that extra layer of mean last year brought him the Horizon Cup Tournament. Yep, and now he's got a shot at the title. Green Harker Dirge up off the top. Whoa. Oh, Dirt no. Off and, oh, oh, it dropped. It is, it, the Dirge is writhing in pain. You don't see Harker Dirge manhandled like that off the cover. Two. Well, like I said, it was just a number of weeks ago that he was left laying. He had all that punishment across the back. He was out with an injury for a week. And now stomping across that back is Blake Reed. 
Now, I'm not going to go out and say that Blake Reed needs the work talent agency, but it certainly has focused him much in the same way it focused Cecil Cerveza last year. What is it? What type of Kool-Aid does Dickie Wabash have that he mixes up at his serpent layer somewhere that is able to take somebody like a Blake Reed or like even a Travis Weir and completely flip them to the opposite side. We can flip them to the opposite side. Out goes Parker Durge. And now, Weir's going to pound on the outside and throw Durge back in. This is uh, this is the smarts. Now, quick cover, and Durge is going to kick out. Oh, he's mad now. Uh-oh. That's going to be bad for everybody. Goes right to the nose and eyes of Blake Reed. Back up Parker Dirge into the corner, that feral instinct comes out, and you just never know what's going to happen. Reed going right back at him. Reed trying to prove anything you can do, I can do better. You know, this could be Reed tonight. Oh, right into the throat. We say that, and then Parker immediately cuts him off. Now, remember, you don't have to beat him into subconsciousness. All you have to do is keep him down for a three. That's rough enough to do with Harker Dirge. Now look at this. Handles and big body slam. How often do you see Harker Dirge even picked up for a slam? As easily as that, might I add. Mm. Now this is a gigantic mistake for Blake Reed. You got him down, you keep hitting him. Or you pin him, and he's just taking too much time. Up off the ropes. And again, taking too much time. A veteran like Dirge is going to use every opportunity to keep that title. Also, just crawling. Makes his way up. Quick Ooh. leg drop. Makes his way up again. Another quick leg drop. These are very short, chopping leg drops to the neck and throat area. Cover to no. Every time Harker Dirge gets a cover, Dickie Wabash looks like he's on his deathbed. Yeah, well, try not to have so much fun. And gonna try to slingshot him into the corner, maybe. Yep, up and into that corner goes Harker Dirge, and down goes Dirge. And roll him up for the big champion. Cover. Two. Well, that was not a strong kick out by Dirge. No, but look what Blake Reed goes right back to, that choke. Reed getting in the referee's face. That's not the way to do things. And a right hand to Harker Dirge. Dirge wobbling. Can he reach back where we see? Missed opportunity right there. One, two, he kicks out. Reed taking too much time. He might have cost himself a couple of shots here. He's going to try to slingshot him again into that corner. Going to go well one too many times. Coming up. Catch uh -oh. himself. Dirge going to that second rope. Doesn't do that often. Boot to the face. Oh, no. Shades of the dog face gremlin. Wow. And that will turn things around in a hurry. But Dirge has got to find that fifth wind. He's had a lot beaten out of him by the big man. Both wrestlers make it up. A drop kick by Dirge. Parker just throwing everything. Well, Dirge has got to go with speed right now. Strength isn't going to do it. Switch into the ropes. Coming off. Sunset flip. Sunset flip. Can he get the big uh -oh. man? Oh, no. Ouch. Ouch. Missed with a punch. Roll up. One. Could have it. Could have it. No. Dirge takes a second to find what's going on. Duck and missed the clothesline. Shoulders two oh, oh. kicks out of the Blake hole slam. Wow, and that was only a roll up, that wasn't even a kick out. So close, he's got to stay on him. Blake Reed will have to stay on him, and so far, he's done a pretty good job. Wait a minute, wait a minute, look at Travis in the corner. Well, that 
That particular turnbuckle has had problems all Are night. Are you kidding me? What's he doing? He's taking that turnbuckle off. The referee doesn't see it. The steel buckle is now. And he's hitting the, the turnbuckle cover underneath the ring. So. Oh, no. Now, now at the nerve hold right now probably isn't going to take out Harper Dirge. But it does sap the strength. And Dirge knows how to get out of this. He's going to stand up and take a lot of the pressure off. Work into him. A couple of shots to their gut. And a kick. A couple more. Oh! Jawbreaker. Absolutely. A cannonball. Wait a second. We don't see Harper do this. Not very often. Second row. Oh! Handle off the top. Big man still not going down. He's saying, let me do it again. Going up to the second rope. And he lands again. This time gets down to one knee, but right back up again. Boy, really tough to get down, isn't he? Up oh, off the rope. He ducks it. Big boot. Still not going down. Uh oh. Oh, he goes with the DDT. That's his move. He is out. Parker. Harper Dirk's taking too much time. Oh, gotta be a win. Oh, come on! Yeah, he pulled him over to the ropes. He's too close. Too close. That's exactly what we look for Dickie Wabash to do. Exactly the type of thing that he would do in this match. Absolutely. And Dirge is really frustrated at this point. Pointing towards Wabash. Throw it in oh that, my God. that turnbuckle. Into that, well, oh no. The, Oh, look out. Oh. The big man going to that second. He's just sitting on the top. That's 350 pounds. Oh. We've got yeah. a new champion. We have a new champion. Oh, my God. That, that exposed turnbuckle. And Dirge went down. Blake Green comes down on the chest of Harker Dirge, and there is a new UWC champion. Blake Reed. Blake Reed is the champion. Harker Dirge walking his way to the back. And you can see, ladies and gentlemen, The Wabash Talent Agency once again has the championship. Your new heavyweight champion is Lake Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, the victorious Wabash Talent Agency.